Hello and welcome everyone. A Plague Tale Requiem is the long-awaited sequel to 2019's A Plague Tale Innocence. Follow Amicia and Hugo's play to southern France, where perils and adventure await them once more. Set course for the open sea, contend with religious zealots, and run away from even more plague rats this time around. With expanded gameplay features, Asobo Studio sets out to continue the sibling's story in an unforgettable epic journey. Expanding the size, scale, and scope of A Plague Tale Requiem is first and foremost the visuals. Traveling from Guyenne to the Mediterranean coast will invoke a sense of wonder, like entering a completely new world. The pleasant temperate climate and colorful disposition of the coastal city sets the stage for the dramatic turn that will soon happen. A Plague Tale Requiem's visuals are breathtaking, with a noticeable uplift from the original, but perhaps not one that warrants the heavy cost to performance. Increased draw distances grant access to stunning views of the blue Mediterranean waters, while small details bring life to bustling marketplaces. From the brightest of moments to the darkest depths of despair, Requiem will unleash a cataclysmic amount of rats upon the known world, enough to power the electrical grid of a small country. The Sobo's proprietary engine can now render a staggering 300,000 rats at one time, a seismic increase from the measly 5,000 in the original. Of course, keeping in line with the main theme, this all comes at a cost. In order to run this impressive game, you will need a very capable PC, and the use of upscaling technologies like Nvidia's DLSS is a must in order to achieve the best experience with the highest frame rates possible. Even without ray tracing, the lighting and reflections are nearly impeccable, but any future inclusion of ray tracing will stress hardware even more than it already does. Its performance in the here and now is incredibly tough for current hardware, but at the end of the day, the game runs well enough, and its eye-watering visuals will only get easier to manage as time moves forward. Aerial shots unveil a sense of grandness not seen in the original. While Innocence can be described as a set of tunnels, Requiem opens up the world with new perspectives. Their more open visuals is reflected in its traversal as well. While linear gameplay still makes up the bulk of Requiem, more sections have been expanded giving players multiple avenues of mobility, something a little different from its predecessor. Deciding which route to take and how to deal with difficult situations is a choice you'll have to make. With less hand-holding this time around, players are required to dig deep and form creative solutions to problems. For example, trying to reach the next building could simply mean killing all guards in your way or you can take a more covert approach to pass undetected. Traversal can present many obstacles as well. Navigating the sea of rats that would love nothing more than to devour you is just another thing you'll have to deal with along with soldiers. Using fire and light to ward off the furry pestilence, you can create a small safe zone, a pocket of respite to contemplate your next move. Some puzzles will require the help of friends. You can instruct Lucas to stupefy enemies and ask Hugo to crawl under small spaces where others cannot. Requiem's puzzles were not the most creative or challenging, but were still fun nonetheless. Combat has been greatly expanded. Previously, Amicia fought mostly from the shadows, sneaking around danger, preferring not to be seen. But she's willing to fight head-on this time around, and her combative abilities show the newfound confidence she has in herself. However, Amicia isn't a trained fighter. Rather, she is a scrappy and resourceful one. Getting caught in close quarters almost spells certain doom, but unlike before, she can now fight back quite effectively using new weapons and skills. Equipped with her father's sling, you can once again arm yourself with rocks and alchemical concoctions, and hurl them at enemies with devastating effect. The addition of quick time events and new weapons like knives and a crossbow livens up the pace of combat. Stealth at its core is avoiding detection by evading enemy line of sight. You can hide behind objects or create diversions to disrupt patrol patterns. Requiem implements peripheral cues to alert players of nearby enemies, but this system wasn't perfect and can lead to a few moments of frustration. While Amicia's crouch animation and movements are at best a little weird, the stealth was handled well for the most part. 
The game really shines though when combat, stealth, and puzzle solving work in tandem. Each of these things were pretty unremarkable on their own, but I had the most fun when doing all three at the same time. Wading through a sea of rats will require using your alchemical bag of tricks, but doing so may draw the unwanted attention of nearby soldiers, who may catch you in a compromised position. Approaching the game using stealth can be challenging, but feels all the more rewarding when you've executed a well laid out plan. At the end of each chapter, your playstyle will be reflected through your skill tree. This isn't your typical skill tree where you choose where to spend points, but rather one that progresses automatically based on your actions. Your prudence skills will improve the less you are seen, while engaging in combat will increase Amicia's aggressiveness. Using your alchemical mixtures will advance your opportunism. Doing a mix of these things will split experience between two or more skill paths. The other way you level up is by upgrading your equipment. Collect tools and scraps, and use them at workbenches to improve your weapons, increase carrying capacities, or advance your alchemy proficiency. Along with tools and scraps, you'll find basic components to synthesize alchemical compounds, which can be done both in and out of combat. These alchemical concoctions will have various effects that can be applied to multiple weapons, to use against enemies, or to solve puzzles. Traveling through France will introduce you to all new sights and experiences. Flowers and souvenirs can bring glimmers of joy to an otherwise grim tale. After six months of peace, Amicia and Hugo travel to the southern coast in search of a cure for Hugo's affliction. Following the events of Innocence, the siblings have formed an incredibly strong bond, but have also grown and matured in different ways. Although still a child, Hugo bears his burden with dignity, while Amicia is haunted by traumas past and present. As the story takes a dark turn, they set for an island that may have the answers they seek, meeting new acquaintances, and making lifelong friends on the way. As you play through Requiem, see what their bonds can endure, and witness Hugo and Amicia push to their limits as they each deal with their own demons. Requiem's story unfolds at an appropriate and enjoyable pace. While Innocence was an entirely guided experience, Requiem lets go of your hand to give you a bit more freedom. It's still very much a linear game, but the open levels and longer runtime still felt great from start to finish. In a four episode podcast, the developer speculated how opening the game would affect the rhythm of the story, but I think they did a great job loosening the grip on the pacing, just enough to let you breathe and appreciate the memories, while keeping the narrative a strong driving force. Complemented by a gripping score and magnificent voice acting, A Plague Tale Requiem is an embodiment of passion and dedication. From the penitent tones of an angelic choir, to the seafaring influence of the Mediterranean, some tracks reflect inwardly at something deeply poignant, while others romanticize adventure. Its soundtrack encapsulates heart-rending emotions and a young ailing boy's deepest desire. Charlotte McBurney and Logan Hannon reprise their roles once more in A Plague Tale Requiem, and once again deliver powerful performances. With the exception of their mother, the voice acting from the main and supporting characters was exceptional throughout. However, as a small nitpick, I thought the motion capture and audio lip syncing left a little to be desired. The dialogue was well written, and the character interactions had a surprising impact on how I played. Lucas's comments to Amicia grounded my bloodlust and made me sheathe my sling for a less confrontational path. A Plague Tale Requiem may not be revolutionary in any singular facet, but it's a great evolution of the series. You'll explore just how strong the bond between Hugo and Amicia has become, and witness how past events have taken its toll on Amicia's body and mind. Complemented by a well-written script and strong acting performances, the narrative-driven story progresses at an enjoyable pace that's been enhanced by the expanded gameplay. Traversal, puzzles, stealth, and combat have been improved and work best together to deliver a fun and streamlined experience. Wrapped in a beautiful package, Requiem's stunning visuals are mesmerizing, while its hauntingly powerful soundtrack transcends personal ideologies. Requiem is greater than the sum of its parts, and delivers a captivating and cohesive experience of a worthy successor. Asobo Studios has outdone themselves and continues to keep the bar high for well-paced, narrative-driven games. A Plague Tale Requiem is a game I wholeheartedly recommend, and it's one of the best games I've played this year. Thank you so much for watching. 
I had a lot of fun playing this game, and I hope you do too. Let me know what you thought of the game, and what you would like to see next in the series. If Asobo Studios decides to make another game in the Plague Tale series, then I would love for them to explore other great but terrible epidemics such as the Justinian Plague that's alluded to so much in the series, or possibly even something as recent as the Spanish Flu. One can only hope. Until next time, see ya.